This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. I'm so happy to be here with a new story for you. I picked it straight out of my story garden. Our story today is about a garden gnome. Do you know those guys? They're small, kind of like elves, and they have little red hats and they stand in your garden. When I was little, I had this big book and it was all about gnomes. I loved it. It was a big hardcover book and I'd just sit with it open on my lap and flip through learning all about gnomes. All that's to say, I was clearly very cool as a kid. Our story is about a gnome. So naturally, I invited a giraffe as my guest today. This makes complete sense, friends. Just go with it. Hello, Jean-Pierre. Please come in. Oh. Oh. Uh Uh-oh. Let me just... Okay, JP, I'm just going to tell my friends over here what's happening. Yes, you can find water up in the kitchen. Just watch out for the ceiling fan. Are you okay? Okay, there's an ice pack in the freezer. (sighs) Sorry about that, tiny people. It looks like my giraffe friend, Jean-Pierre, can't actually fit inside my studio. I didn't think that through super well. Somehow, this is a mystery even to me, I've managed to fit many large-ish animals in or at least halfway into my studio. Jean-Pierre is just very, very tall. And my studio is, well, it's not. Hopefully he found an ice pack up there. All right. I'm sure Jean-Pierre would not want to keep us from hearing this delightful story. I can fill him in on it later. Let's get to it. Our story is called The Gnome and the Seed. Now remember, there are no pictures. Huh? What was that? Hello? Is someone... (gasps) Now remember, there are no pictures. You'll have to imagine them in your mind. Whoa. That was amazing. Let me check my notes. Tiny people, that was a listener named Kendi. Thank you, Kendi. Truth is, it's a lot of work to remember to say this part of the podcast every single time. In fact, sometimes I forget to say it at all. I know, frightening. If you'd like to help me out with this part in the future, listen to the end of this episode and I'll tell you just how to do it. Okay, back to the good stuff. Okay, here we go. It was time for T to go off with her seed to begin her very own garden. She was a gnome, and this is what gnomes did when they got to be seven. Seven's quite old, after all. All the newly seven-year-old gnomes lined up for their seeds. It was all very official. Esther Wrigley Bean, please step forward. Thank you kindly. Here's your seed. My goodness, don't drop it. Kaya Robertson Boots, you're next. Pedro Perezkins, step up now, please. T waited nervously for her turn. On her shoulder, Bem, her pet ladybug, clapped her teensy feet together with excitement. Oh, you're up soon, T. This is so exciting. I can't wait for you to get your seed. Do you think it will be purple? T frowned. It will probably not be purple. Maybe it will be turquoise. If it were turquoise, it would be really so pretty. Do you think it might possibly be turquoise? It's not going to be turquoise, Bim. Can, can you just, just, just for one second, okay? Let's do quiet time, all right? Okay. And finally, T Peppercornish. T stepped forward to receive her seed. The announcer dropped it into her hand. T closed her fist around it. Bim hopped up and down on T's shoulder. Is it purple? Is it turquoise? Is it aquamarine? It's green. 
T said, looking down at the tiny seed. It's lime green. The announcer fished a small slip of paper from her pocket and squinted at it. Oh, I should have brought my glasses. All right, then. Thank you for shopping at Shoes for Knobbly Feet. Please go to our website to enter... Oh, dear. This is my shoe receipt. Excuse me kindly. She fished another small bit of paper out of her pocket and squinted. Ah, congratulations to all gnomes who are now seven. We wish you much luck and good fortune as you go forth with your seeds to mark your bright future as garden gnomes. The crowd waited, thinking this couldn't possibly be the end of the speech. That was the end. Everyone, please clap now. Woohoo! Yeah! Woohoo! T shuffled out of the clearing of the forest along with the rest of the seven year old gnomes, except they all quickly went off, skipped, actually, with their seeds, full of purpose and direction. T stood at the edge of the clearing and looked down at the seed in her tiny hand. I will plant you in the most perfect spot I can find. Somewhere safe. You'll never get hurt. Uh, You're not planning on planting me, are you? You're doing that thing where you talk to an object, right? I notice you do that sometimes. It's a little weird. I guess that you're trying to be... Bim. Yes? This is kind of an important moment for me. Oh, right. Sorry. T took a deep breath and stepped forward into the forest to find the perfect place to plant her seed. T wanted to find somewhere close to home to plant her seed, so she didn't want to wander too far away. Growing a garden can be hard work, and she'd have to visit her growing seed almost every day. After a little walk, Filled with commentary from Bem. Oh, what a glorious tree. Have you ever seen such a beautiful... (gasps) Oh my, did you see that bird? It just narrowly missed your hat. Narrowly, I say. They soon reached a spot nearby where there was an opening in the trees. Sunlight streamed down. A bit too much sunlight. The earth on the forest floor was dry. A bit too dry. T looked up at the sky. There was no pretty rainbow overhead, and she'd really been hoping for a rainbow to overlook her new garden as it grew. All that was in the clearing was a big rock. Oh, this is quite nice. Quite nice indeed. Oh, I can just see it now. Flowers, vegetables, leaves for me to perch upon. Oh, this will be very... T began walking away from the dry little sunlit patch of land. Oh, Okay, Bem said. She tucked herself against T's shoulder for the next leg of their journey. They traveled on. After stopping for a drink from a trickling stream, they came to another nice opening in the forest. It was mossy and green. A sparrow flew by T's ear. Tweet, 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 they could tweet. still hear the peaceful sounds of the stream burbling over the rocks. Oh, this is nice, Bem said in T's ear. T agreed. She kneeled to the ground and began looking for the perfect place to plant the seed. Bem flew off her shoulder and landed on the forest floor. She shook out her wings and stretched. Oh, this lighting is great for me. See that glint off my exoskeleton? I'm really digging this. T and Bem looked up, wide-eyed. Before them was a gnome, about T's height, She instantly recognized him as another seven-year-old gnome. Oh my, oh, this might be a problem. Not sure what we should do in this situation, not sure at all. Maybe we should... Bem, chill for a sec, okay? Okay. Um, hi, hello. The gnome smiled. T smiled back. Bem grumbled to herself. This is your spot, isn't it? T asked, looking around. She saw a small, circular mound where the other gnome must have already planted his seed. Yeah, I got here a little while ago. Nice, right? Very, 
T put Bem on her shoulder and turned to go. You can share my spot if you want, the gnome said kindly. His eyes twinkled. He seemed perfectly nice. That's, that's really kind of you, but I, I think I'll keep looking, T said. He waved goodbye and she turned to go. As they walked back into the thick of the trees, Bem whizzed around T's head and landed back on her shoulder with a slump. T, didn't you hear him? We could share his spot. I heard him. It was really nice of him to offer. Exactly. Why don't we share his spot? It's so nice there. It's green, it's warm, there's a stream nearby. Bem, T said, stopping for a moment. The afternoon sun streamed through the leaves. Yes? If I share a garden spot, I have to see the other gnome every single day. It's like having a roommate. He he seemed fine, pleasant, nothing wrong with the gnome. But I'm not sure we would click. You know what I mean? Well, when you put it that way... Okay then, let's keep going. I feel like we'll find something soon. But they didn't find anything soon. They kept walking and walking through the forest, stopping every once in a while to check out little patches of land here and there. None of them were perfect, and T wanted a perfect place for her seed. Finally, they came to a space between the trees. But this place was different. It was already a garden in full bloom. The garden was overflowing with flowers and vegetables. The sun streamed down with just the right amount of heat and warmth. T looked up and saw a rainbow framing the blue, blue, blue sky. I never thought of planting my seed in a garden that was already there. You mean plant your seed here? Yeah. When you think about it, it's the perfect place. Where better to put a seed than in a place where you know it will grow? This garden is perfect. But T, this is some gnome's garden. Don't you think they won't mind? Gnomes like to share. Bem, it's what we do. Hmm, that's true, but don't you think maybe we should check first? T was determined. She had to take care of her seed. And the best way to do that was to put it in the best possible place, right? She kneeled down to the forest floor at the edge of the garden. She brushed some leaves and sticks away with her hand and gingerly placed her seed in the surface of the soil. It sat there, exposed, with the light shining down. Not too much, just right. T scooped up a fresh handful of soil and was about to drop it over the seed when she heard, Let me tell you a story before you do that. T and Bem both looked up, alarmed by the raspy voice. (coughs) (coughs) Ah, excuse me. Had something stuck in my throat. Hi, I'm Stumpelstiltskin. Jerry Stumpelstiltskin. Not Rumpelstiltskin. Ugh. That guy. Anyway, it's a whole thing. T sighed with relief. Uh, sorry to startle you. Quick story before you plant there. T picked up her seed and tucked it away in her pocket. You are welcome to plant there, Jerry went on. But I I just wanted to tell you something before you do. Okay. We're listening. Oh, hi there, ladybug. Didn't see you there. Anyway, you're seven, right? Yes, just turned. That's great. I'm nine, but uh, back when I turned seven, I started out just like you, looking for the perfect spot for your seat. Is that right? Yes, I was just like you. Although I can tell from what you're wearing that you're from a different village. Where are you from? T told him, and he nodded. Oh, that's quite a ways away. Anyway, I traveled around. Actually had my pet beetle on my shoulder, too. Jerry said, nodding at Bem. Bem stood up huffily. Excuse me, I am a ladybug, kind sir. Well, ladybugs are actually just a type of bee. T, let's go. We do not need to accept this type of treatment. Bem, calm down. 
I'm sorry, ladybug. Anyway, I traveled around with my seed and my friend. We went all over the place. Actually walked right through this patch of land. It was quite dry at the time. Totally empty. None of this was here. T looked around, disbelieving it. A dry patch of land? This? Yeah, the sun was a bit too hot here. I decided to keep going. But hours later, when I thought I'd found the perfect place, I put my hand in my pocket for my seed. It was gone. <gasps> Bem, calm down. It's shocking. So the seed was gone. I'd torn a hole in my pocket and didn't realize it. The seed must have fallen through. What did you do? Shh, Bam, stop. I retraced my steps. Went back through all the patches of land in the forest that I'd walked through. Couldn't find my seat anywhere. Finally, I ended up back here. I was so tired, I laid down and fell asleep. I couldn't believe that I had lost my seat. I had one job to do. Am I right? It rained that night, and in the morning I got up to go, soaking wet. And as I walked, I saw this. Jerry ran over to a tall green plant with hardy leaves. It wasn't like this yet, though. It was like this. Jerry dropped down to his knees and flattened himself out. He put his hand flat, just a tiny bit off the ground. That was all there was. A tiny sprig of green. But I knew it had come from my seed. Two years later, he said, rising from the ground, it's become all of this. Wow. So... You planted all of this by accident? That's right. But this is the perfect spot. Sun, but enough shade. Not too dry, not too rainy. The rainbow? Yeah, the rainbow's only here sometimes. T looked all around, trying to imagine this spot in the forest as just an empty patch of land. Anyway, look. Like I said, you're welcome to plant here, but, well, my point is, it's not where you plant that matters. It's the work you put in after you plant it. This all came about because I've done the work. You see? T looked away from the garden and back at the trees. She and Bem had come very far from home now in their search for the perfect place. If she planted her seed here, it would be very inconvenient lots of walking, and much less time to actually care for her plants. T watched as Jerry started working on the garden. He pruned some of the bushes and collected some berries. He turned over the soil. It was nice to meet you, T said, and turned to go. Bye. T, what are you doing? Where are we going? Bem, didn't you hear his story? Yes, but... Bem... Trust me. Okay. T came to the edge of the small clearing and stopped. The forest trees made a ring around it. They were not far from home now. Not far at all. But T, this place is not perfect. We said no to this place, remember? T remembered. Sunlight streamed down. A bit too much sunlight. The earth on the forest floor was dry, a bit too dry. In the sky, there was no pretty rainbow, just blue, 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 and milky white clouds. A large rock sat in the clearing. That was all. T knelt down in the middle of the dry patch of land and scooped out a hole in the dirt. She dropped the lime green seed inside. Goodbye, T said. I'll take care of you. Wait, are you are you talking to me? Because I don't want you to leave me. Oh, oh, right. You're talking to the seed again. Got it. T smiled and covered up the seed with another scoop of soil. Then she and Bem went to the big rock and laid down to rest. John Pierre, did you find the ice packs? Oh, good. Oh. Oh, how did... What? How did you fit down here? Uh-huh. 
Uh huh. Ugh. Tiny people, Jean Pierre found a way to fit into my hallway. But now my hallway is wider. And also, there's a hole in the ceiling. Wow. Okay. Add this to the list of things I need to consider when I book guests for this show. Anyway, Jean Pierre, since you were apparently able to listen to some of the story, what did you think? Oh, good. I'm so glad you liked it. That makes me so. Oh, oh, really? Ugh, tiny people, Jean Pierre just told me one thing he took issue with. He does not like rainbows. Actually, he said he does not prefer rainbows. Okay, Jean Pierre, what do you prefer instead of rainbows? That doesn't make any sense. You can't prefer bananas over rainbows. There's no relationship between a banana and a rainbow. He says they have the same shape. Ugh, <laughs> oh, Jean Pierre. Oh dear. Okay. We will continue this ridiculous conversation off mic because my friends here do not need to hear this nonsense. Tiny people, I hope you enjoyed the story too. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. Big thanks today to the tiny people who provided sound effects used in today's story. Thank you to Riley and Nora. Okay, friends, I'm going to take some time off to write more stories for you. In other words, I need to go tend to my story garden. Don't worry, I'll be back. While I'm gone, I would love to hear from you. You can find me on all the social medias, and you can also email me at ria at littlestoriestinypeople.com. I love to see your drawings hear your messages, and read your stories. Send them all my way. Also, big thanks to Kendi for helping me with my intro. You can also help me out with my reminder of the beginning of an episode. All you have to say is, remember, there are no pictures. You'll have to imagine the pictures in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, here we go. I'll put these lines in the episode description so you can practice them. Big people, you can use the voice memo app on your phone to record it and just email it to me at ria at littlestoriestinypeople.com. You might just hear your voice in the podcast. And lastly, big people, see if the podcast app you love lets you leave ratings and reviews. I read every review, they are super motivating, and they help the podcast reach more people, both big and tiny. So please do that if you get a chance. Thank you, as always, for listening in.